Hello everyone and welcome to Merlin's Manor. Today I'm doing another one of my new to me games videos. These are games that I played for the very first time in the month of October. And I didn't play as many games overall in the month of October as usual and I didn't play as many new games either. I only have three new games this month as well as one that was a carryover from last month that I had played the first half last month and I played the second half this month which I'll be going over which is one of the exit games. And I also am going to include a game that I forgot to include in my previous month's video about September. I forgot to include one of the games, so I'll include that at the end of this video as well. And so let's go ahead and get right on into the games that I played for the very first time in the month of October. And the first one I have here is Heat, Pedal to the Metal. And this game has been on my list for a long time to play. I hadn't gotten it because I've been waiting on Borlandia to get their copies in. I was excited to get this in and get it to the table in the month of October. I played it two times. We played it back to back and played two different maps. And we really enjoyed it. I'm giving it a preliminary rating of 9.5 out of 10. This could go up, I, I conceivably could see by going up a, a 0.5 to a 10 or down to a 0.5 to a 9. I'm kind of need some more plays to figure out exactly where it will fall, whether it's going to be a 10, a 9, or stick at that 9. 5 level, but we really, really enjoyed this game. It's got a lot of hand management to it. It's a racing game where you are trying to decide which cards you want to play at certain times to, to try and get a bunch of speed. you got to change gears in order to play more cards or less cards. As you're coming into these corners, you have to kind of slow down so as not to go around the corner too fast and have to put a bunch of heat into your deck, which then is going to come out and cause you problems because you can't play those. You have to find out ways to get rid of them and get them back into your engine so they can come out again. If you ever run out of heat, you're going to spin out and that's going to cause a lot of problems. Uh, there's just a whole lot that goes into this game, the strategy playing it well. There's lots of tension in the game as there were people that were quite a ways back and then all of a sudden they're right on your tail because... You know, you, you kind of have to slow down to kind of get rid of some of that heat, and then all of a sudden they, they're catching back up to you. And so there's a lot of tension. You never really knew who was going to win the game. And one of our games, somebody came from third place all the way into first place and won. Uh, and there was a lot of tension uh, on both of our games between first and second place at the end trying to make it there. And so it's a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. You've got this idea. You've got to really balance taking heat to be able to do more, get around corners faster, to change gears, maybe to get more cards played out, you might want to jump up. There's a lot of different reasons you would take heat that you want to try and do that. And there's also times when you want to be cautious where you don't want to take the heat and there's a lot of balance that goes along there. If you take up too much heat, you're going to have problems. If you don't take enough heat, you're going to find yourself losing the game because you can just never catch up and, and, and get up there. And so there's a, it's a very interesting trying to balance that. Uh, we haven't played with any of the modules, including the uh, special cards that you can have that go into your deck that you draft at the beginning. Really looking forward to trying those out as well. Haven't played the solo mode yet and tried out the legendary cars that you go up against. Uh, we just played two four-player games and uh, enjoyed them both. Looking forward to getting this game back to the table many, many more times. Really enjoyed it. That is Heat. The next game I want to talk about is Hunger. And Hunger had one play in the month of October. Uh, this is a game that had been on my shelf of shame since January of last year. And so uh, it's been a long time coming. I thought I'd get it to the shelf last October and then didn't. And then this October, like, I'm getting this game to the shelf. I enjoyed it. I'm giving it a preliminary rating of a 7 out of 10. It's similar to Clank in that you are pushing your luck as you're going out trying to then make it back at the end. If you go out further, you're going to be able to get more points as you hunt as well as there's some other perks out further down the way, especially if you can get all the way to the end and get a rose, which is going to give you some victory points as well as some ongoing uh, special ability there. It could be victory points, it could be other things, and then you're going to be trying to uh, get back from that. Do you go all the way out and get that rose that you're tempted by, or do you go kind of a mid-range and kind of uh, get some of those extra benefits and get back, or do you play even more cautious and just kind of float close to the edge and just hunt, hunt, hunt? Uh, it's 
definitely something you have to try and decide. There's a difference in the end game is predetermined, different than Clank. It's only 16 rounds rather than having a, a, this Clank system where you are getting damage and stuff and where uh, the players kind of determine when the game is going to end by the first player getting back is going to start making things cascade. Uh, you don't have that in Hunger. It's it's 16 rounds. It's always going to be 16 rounds. You're not going to be damaged at all. Uh, you're just going to have to try and get out as far as you can, taking risk, and then coming back. It also doesn't have the huge variety of scoring opportunities like Clank does. It has a few different ways that you score points, but not that huge point salad kind of thing. You're not going to have the huge scores that you have in Clank either. You have to balance as you're going through the game, taking on cards that will slow you down but are worth victory points. And there are a few ways that you can cull those cards from your active hand where you still count the victory points at the end, but they're not going to be coming back up in your deck because you digest them. But there's only certain locations that you can do that at, and so you're not going to, be able to digest everybody. And you have to kind of stop on those one of those points as well in order to do that. You have to balance whether it's worth that or stopping somewhere else. It's going to get you a different benefit. I really enjoyed also the theme of the game, the, the vampires uh, feeding uh, very interesting kind of theme there as well as the specific side effects that come from some of those cards. There are some that if you hunt them and then they come back up into your hand, let's say it's spicy, that means you have to spend your movement going towards a the nearest well because uh, you ate a spicy villager and so you are uh, having to get some water there to uh, wash them down a little bit there or you have another one that's a little bit tipsy and they're going to make you have to go away from the castle because you're, you're confused because you ate one of those ones so there's different effects as well that are very interesting you've also got the some some uh, different animals that you can pick up along the way familiars that are going to give you different benefits uh, there's just a bunch of different things going on. I like the theme, the idea of getting back before dawn as well as part of that theme. I uh, really enjoy the theme. I think that's what's going to keep me coming back even more so than the gameplay. I'm not so sure about the gameplay yet. I definitely prefer Clank's gameplay uh, outside of the Push Your Luck. They are very different games, and uh, I really enjoy the overall feel of Clank over the hunger. But this one's going to keep me coming back probably because of the theme, more so than the gameplay. I just really like the idea of exploring the, the theme in this game. So that is The Hunger. 7 out of 10 is my preliminary ranking. Of course, I've only played it once, and so keep that in mind. The next one I'm going to talk about I don't have here. It's a friend's game. It's Kepler. 3042 and we had one play of this game as well and I'm giving it a preliminary rating of 7.5 out of 10 and in this game you are exploring and colonizing planets as well as terraforming them while you're building out various technological advancements as well along the way they're going to give you the ability to do things more and more you also have personal goals that, you have, that give you a game plan that's going to be different from other players and will likely cause you to prioritize different things than others. I found there wasn't a lot of us kind of competing over different areas because we each kind of went a different way based on what our original uh, goal cards were that are going to cause us to play differently. Uh, of course, we've only played one game and I'm not sure if that's going to change from game to game. Um, I do want to caution, be careful about focusing too much on your goals. I really focused on my goal, which was getting out to uh, some outer planets and, and, and I can't remember, uh, terraforming the two outer planets. And, and I gave up some early points that I could have gotten that I wound up not being able to get back to getting the points from those things. I don't know if it wound up, would have been better if I had just focused on some smaller things to, to get points that way rather than my, my goal. So you kind of have to balance things a little bit even there and decide, is it really worth going after this goal or is something else going to be better? It has an interesting system of permanently spending resources from a limited pool that you cannot get back and deciding when you should do that and how you should do that. Uh, oftentimes, in order to take extra actions, you'll spend this, this resource permanently where there's only a couple times that you get those back from that place when you're going along this track and otherwise, they're gone. You can't produce those anymore. And If you spend too many of those, well, in the future, you're not going to be able to do certain actions because you won't have the, the energy to spend or you won't have the... the um, the other thing, um, the other thing to spend there, and so you have to balance what, how much of those you are spending, because you don't want to also fall behind others who are spending their their extra resource or their resources wisely uh, in order to do those extra actions. So there's a balance there to be had. 
Also, the engine building aspects are fun as well. You have these different tracks that you are advancing on that are all going to help you in different ways. You can't advance everything to the full, and so you have to decide how much you're going to focus on each one uh, based on what you are planning to do in your game. And so I've enjoyed this. I gave it a 7.5 out of 10. The next game on my list is the one that we played the first half of last month and the second half this month, and that is Exit the Catacombs of Horror, and I rate this one a 5.5 out of 10. Uh, we played also the Lord of the Rings one previously, and that one I would rate even lower, probably a 5, maybe even a 4. I enjoyed this one a little bit more, but I still am not really fully into the Exit series of game. Uh, they are escape room style games. You're solving puzzles. Uh, there are different riddle cards that are going to come up, and... Um, components that you're going to unlock as you go through the game. Uh, you're going to be trying to solve these puzzles. They're going to give you a code, and you're going to enter that code into this dial by lining up with the uh, symbol that relates to the puzzle you're solving and the, the different numbers, and it's going to give you an uh, opening here that's going to tell you which number, which card to go to, and to check out and see if you got the code right. And it, it, you know, that, that, that works well. I just didn't really enjoy all the puzzles that you were solving in, the, in this, these exit games. Uh, some were very super random, and and you're like, I will, you know, how would I even have thought about that? Now it does give you hints that you can take. You can take these hint cards that, uh, if the hint is something you've already thought of, then it's not going to count against you. But if it's something that you hadn't thought of that's going to help you, then you're going to. Uh, Keep those in a pile at the end of the game. However many of those hints that you had to use is going to lower your score the more hints that you use, as well as the more time that it took, it's going to lower your end score there. So you're trying not to take the hints, but at the same time, you have to take some of them because some of them are just so obscure of what you're looking for, trying to find, that you wouldn't even think of. Uh, and so um, the randomness of some of the puzzles just have you kind of scratching your head like, why did they think to make this random thing? I'm not going to spoil anything there for you. Uh, as far as that goes. Uh, so I, I enjoyed it somewhat, but also somewhat I, I didn't enjoy it. Um, we also have an unlock game that, that we're going to play at some point, and maybe that one will be a more enjoyable style puzzle for us. Uh, we'll see. I also have a few more of these. I bought a bunch of them at the same time that we might try out and see if some of the exit games uh, are a little bit better for us. Another thing I, I don't really like as much about the exit games that we've played is that they really try to get you to throw them away after you're done instead of handing them on because they've got certain things that they want you to manipulate that are going to make them unusable for future turns. In fact, there was one thing that I wouldn't see a way around it other than the fact that we accidentally solved the puzzle without even um, doing the, the one thing that we were supposed to do. Again, I'm not going to give away what that is. It's like I'm not really sure how we would have solved it without ruining the, the piece there where you couldn't pass it on to somebody else. And so for a one-time use thing that you can't even pass on to somebody else, that kind of gets me a little kind of irked there that uh, it's very hard to, to do that. And we managed to keep everything from being used, but in this one, only barely because we were able to solve it without one of the components being used up. So anyway, uh, that's one thing to keep in mind. This is very single use. You can't even really pass it on to somebody else unless you really, really uh, kind of do some things to get around that. Anyway, that is Exit Catacombs of Horror. I'm giving a 5.5 out of 10. And so that's all the games that I played in October for the first time, but I want to bring up one that I forgot last month for the month of September, and that was Books of Time. And so this game is... a, a we play it one time in the month of September, and I'm rating an 8.5 out of 10 as a preliminary rating here. And what you're doing is you're collecting these different pages to build out these three different books. You're going along these different tracks to be able to do things. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, the components, the books themselves especially, are really nice. and It's very unique that you're building out these books. You've got these binders that you're opening up and you're putting cards into those binders. A very interesting mechanic there, very interesting way those components work there. I really like all the combos that you can kind of pull off as you're going through, the engine building through the pages that you're putting into your books that you can then take the close, pay, close book action that you're going to actually go back through all of your pages and take these different benefits going backwards through the book. And it's very a lot of fun to build out those engines. I did find though we didn't use the closing your book as often as we thought we would going into the game because there's just so much 
going on in the game, so many different things that you're trying to accomplish that you don't get to do things as much as you would hope to. But that's part of the the appeal of an engine building game. You don't get to do as much as you would want to do. It leaves you wanting more, and I think that worked out very well. Also, it's very interesting that you have to decide uh, whether you're going to go for some of the harder goals or not as you're going along. You've got these three different goal sets of cards that once you take one off, if you don't accomplish the next one at the end of the game, then you can't count the earlier one. So that kind of gives you a little extra thing to kind of focus on uh, what you're going to do there as well. Uh, there's just so much going on in this game. I really, really enjoyed it. Highly recommend The Books of Time. So these are the games that we played for the first time in the month of October, plus Books of Time being one I forgot from last month. And, of course, Exit, the game here, was one that we played the first half of in the month of September and then the second half in October. And one thing I forgot to mention about this one, I really would recommend you doing them a lot closer together than we did. Uh, we wound up finding ourselves in this game coming back and saying, oh, uh, uh, what were we doing? What, 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 where, where are we at here? Uh, because we left too much time in between. So I want to throw that out there as well as a warning. If you're going to do it in two different sessions, try to keep them uh, closer together within maybe a week of one another. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'm looking forward to playing some of these games more often. Of course, passing on this game because you can only play it once anyway. But the rest of these games I've enjoyed. Looking forward to getting them back to the table in the future. Let me know what you think about these games as well as maybe some games that you've played recently for the first time. What you thought about those games. Leave those in the comments below. Check out some more of my videos here. And I will catch you in the next video.